Alright, so every paint gun is basically the same. They're all going to basically have the same settings. Normally you have a fan pattern, another setting that controls how much fluid actually comes out the cup and out the paint gun, and another setting controls your air pressure. So most of the time air pressure is going to be on the bottom. If you read the instructions to your gun, it's going to tell you. You look for fan, fluid flow, and air pressure. Here's the air pressure, so as you can hear it, we can turn it way down towards nothing, or we can crank it up where it's a lot, okay? This is the same as an air pressure regulator. A lot of people get obsessed with how much PSI they need to spray something at. Um, I don't know. Don't ask me because I don't know. I'm self-taught 100% and I've learned off of just sound. The way this thing sounds, how much air is flowing through this, I know if I need to crank this thing up or turn this thing down just by what results I get. Um, you can do some research on the product that you're spraying or you can look at your data sheet. Your data sheet will tell you what recommended air pressure that you need. And if you want to do that, then get you an air pressure regulator that shows you the PSI and then you can leave this on the gun wide open and you can restrict your flow on your air pressure regulator to the exact pressure that's recommended. A lot of times what I found when I was learning how to paint, I'm self-taught, I don't do everything necessarily the right way, but you've seen my results, I'll show you my results on this one, is the recommended air pressure they tell me, a lot of times I just wasn't happy with the results. So sometimes if it's thick, I like to turn it way up where it busts, you know, busts the paint up really good, fine particles out the gun. But you don't want to turn it up so high that you're basically blowing air through the center and it's drying the paint that's in the cloud around it. So it's kind of dry spraying on the vehicle and it's not wet. You don't want so much airflow that is doing that. You don't want so little airflow that is spinning and spluttering and creating orange peel, you know, really thick. Everybody knows what orange peel is, like a basketball or an orange. Um, you don't want that texture, you want it slick. So do you a couple of test panels and kind of fill it out before you just hammer it. I honestly kind of adjust mine as I go, um, depending on what it's doing. If it's starting to dry out, you know, or if it needs more or less, depending on the temperature. Stuff changes it, but for when you're starting out, again, you don't need to overwhelm yourself with all of this. Just get you some paint laid down, and especially if it's a race car, you're going to scratch it, you're going to damage it. Hopefully you don't wreck it, but something's going to happen, you're going to have to repaint it. And the next time you'll learn, you know, just do a hood first, a bumper first, your llama or whatever. Okay? So air pressure. You can get way more information on that if you want to get technical, but I really don't want you bogging yourself down or overloading yourself with it. The next is the fluid flow. Okay? I recommend to leave the fluid flow all the way open. So when I'm setting a gun up, I barely turn the nozzle in. That's the spring that I put in with the needle. Okay? When I put it in, I just turn it in a couple turns to actually make it where it's threaded in and it's good. If you can test this and fill this before you put paint in your cup. Don't even put your cup on your gun, no paint. Hold the trigger all the way back and start turning in your fluid flow. When you feel it pushing on your trigger and pushing your trigger forward, okay, that's where it's just starting to engage. That's about where I like to be is where it's just starting to engage. Now, more complicated settings, if I'm doing a spot in or a little tiny area and I'm going to probably run it because, you know, I'm putting out too much fluid. Then I mess with the flow, but on single stage and stuff like that, I don't, I've never messed with the flow. Okay, basic race car, I've never messed with the flow. The only time I mess with the flow is spotting in like base coat, clear coat, high end jobs, you know, that I just really need to let it build up slowly so I can physically watch what it's doing for a certain reason that we're not going to get involved in in this, channel, uh, this video. The next is the fan pattern, okay? So you don't ever want the fan pattern all the way open because it's messy. You don't want it all the way closed because then it's like airbrushing, okay? I like to crank mine in just a little bit, so most people will say go fan all the way open and then bring it in just a touch, okay? That's normally where the paint gun works the best at. You can adjust for your own you know, settings. For me on my gun, I have learned that mine is all the way out and then I turn this one in two and a half turns, that's where I want to be at. Now, other paint guns I've had in the past, sometimes it was only one turn, sometimes it was no turns, half turn, whatever. So you're gonna have to figure that out yourself. This is an Awada Supernova. It has a huge fan pattern on it if you wanna blow it all the way out. Again, I don't want that. So two and a half turns in is where I like to be, but that's probably not gonna be your gun. So what you're gonna do is what I'm about to show you, okay? So we'll come all the way out with our fan pattern first, and I'll show you basically what it looks like. Okay, so there what you can see, you have a perfect line pretty much. It's, mine's actually a little heavier from here and here, 
and it's a little finer here, so that's not necessarily perfect. You basically want a perfect spray pattern would be like a like a football pattern. So it would be small up here, larger in the center, and small up there. So mine's not bad because it's small up here, a little fatter here. Mine's been spraying heavier on the bottom side. It probably needs to be cleaned tremendously. Um, but but that's that's for another story. It's perfectly fine. I can spray like this perfectly fine. So that was wide open. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to crank this thing in two and a half turns. So there's one, there's two, there's a half. That's where I like to spray at. So let me show you what that one looks like. And again, I touch my air pressure just because I'm used to what it sounds like. So there's my actual. So you see how big this gun will spray? That's what I like. Going this big ends up wasting a lot of paint, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, I, I just, this flows it out really good. You can see this pattern shape right here. I really like that. Now, if we turn this thing all the way in, turn the air pressure down, because as you choke your fan in, it's going to shrink your air pressure in, and it's going to blow harder. It's just like a water hose. If you put your foam over the end of it, it sprays harder, the water out the end of it. So as you choke your fan in, it's going to do the same thing. So if you're adjusting your fan in, you probably have to adjust your air pressure a little bit. Here's it all the way in. Straight dots. Okay? We don't want that, obviously. You can't paint like that. Okay? That's going to be a freaking nightmare. You're going to have lines everywhere. So let me reset mine up. And we're going to get started. Two and a half is what I like. Your gun is going to be different. Just play with it on the window like I just did or on a scrap piece of cardboard or plywood or your dad's lawnmower, whatever your situation is. And uh, let's rock and roll. So see if I'm back to where I'm at. This is where I was at. There we go. So same spread. Two and a half, I know, will give me that, not that, or that. That's not what I want. Your window is an excellent place to touch it up. Please don't spray on your garage wall or your doors or anything like that. Use your masking, you know, paper on here. So now let's actually put some paint down. Okay, before we start putting paint down, let's go over what we're gonna do. So we want 50% overlaps, okay? Meaning, we have that pass, our next pass is gonna be like this, our next pass like that, our next pass like that, next pass like that, okay? We want 50% overlaps. So every pass is halfway more, okay? There, 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 there. When you are spraying your bottom, you can pretty much move your nozzle okay, to the bottom of your last pass. It's easiest to see on your first time because it's obviously going green on blue. My second one is going to be a little harder to see. I'm going to have to look at the gloss and stuff. I actually have a muscle memory of where to go because I know by spread on my gun. I've done it so many freaking times. But your center of your fan pattern pretty much needs to be at the bottom of the last. Now, your first one technically needs to be double sprayed or over sprayed. So if you can see right here, if we just made a pass like this, our top would be dry right here and splotchy, whereas our center, this area right here, is technically double wet. This area right here is double wet, etc. So your last pass and your top pass is dry because it's not double. So technically on your first pass, a lot of times, if you don't want to just spray it off off the panel, you've got to basically double it up like that so that it is going uh, it is double there, but be careful not to run it. So a lot of times what I do is I simply spray it off the pattern. I'm not going to go ahead and do that now. Um, but when you first start rocking and rolling, most of the time my first pass is only half the paint on the panel. Okay, because that's setting me up for my second run and then my second run. Or I will double pass my first one and then rock and roll. Either way, you want to make sure your first 50% has 100% coverage. Now, whatever works best for you, like I said, if you're a beginner, I'd probably just hit the nozzle dead on the center of your first pass. So half of it would be on the plastic, half would be on the vehicle. That way, when you step the next one, you know, your next time your nozzle will be down here, you, vice versa, well, no, actually, I'm sorry. Half will be on the plastic, half will be on the vehicle. Then your next pass, you'll be at the bottom of that. So then this right here will be doubled up because now you're starting your step. That's the best way I think it is to keep from running it because then you're just trying to, doing a true double up versus if you do the double over. So if we have our fan pattern like this, okay, and we do, do this and then we run this again, okay, now we do have double right here, but when I go make my next pass up here, now that's triple there because I had to do two full passes right here to get this 50% full coverage 
because every pass is double lapped. Remember the step down? So that means that my next one, being it's 50% over the last one, the last one was double passes. Now that's three times the passes right there. There's your run. That's where your run is because you have so much freaking paint right here. Okay. So that's the reason why I recommend 50% off the panel, just waste it. Nozzle right on the edge, 50% on the panel. Next pass will be 50% over this. You'll step, you won't have three passes over one area. Most of the time when I mess up and I end up passing over an area three times, I get a run and sometimes I forget it and just do it. Um, but it, it happens y'all, so let's spray this thing. All right, so we're gonna start on the top and we're gonna work towards our exhaust wherever your fumes are going out of and you're gonna pull your center out. Some people go one side and then they push one side over to the center and then pull the center to the other side, but I work from center out and I work forward towards the front of the paint booth. So if you were painting in a garage and your exhaust was going underneath your garage door, then you would start in the back of the garage and you would work towards the garage door. You, all, you don't want your airflow pulling paint across areas that's already painted. Then you kind of want to always keep a wet edge also. So we will work all of this down and I'll even work some of the pillars down and then I'll jump back and then pull them down. You always want to kind of be working a red edge a wet edge the trunk lid i just kind of you either can pull the whole thing up or you can pull it you know to the center on both sides up it really don't matter but just work everything equal and just pull your paint away from your last painted spot so like i said you always are pulling away from the wet edge you kind of don't want to start in one area and then start in another area and meet you kind of want to work it all pulling it that's the reason why i pulled the passenger side you know, down and forward, and now I'm going to pull the driver's side, you know, down and forward. And that side I just went up with. It don't really matter if you go up and down on the sides. Uh, whatever you want to do, just make sure you're kind of pulling the paint towards, you know, the exhaust of whatever room you're in, however it flows. Uh, the center of the, the, the hood, I do the same way. I went ahead and knocked the cowl out on this one, and then I pulled my centers towards me, and then I go to the other side and pull that center towards me. Like I said, some people like to push from the fender to the center, and then from the center to the fender on the other side, but I don't like to lean across wet paint, so I don't do much pushing. I always pull it towards me, and that's pretty much the basics of painting. All right, so she turned out pretty decent, y'all. What's going on with that? It looks like the paint has split up here. And like straight up. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, like it's starting to crack. It's like it's lifted from the bottom side up. Uh, because like I said, it was just cracking underneath it. Painted right over tree sap and everything. Man, that don't look bad though. It really don't. It doesn't look bad at all for what it is. A lot of times this guy messages me and he's like, dude, if you don't tone it back a notch, they're gonna expect this quality on every job because before me, they were literally like using spray paint or plastic dip or whatever. So uh, he's always been pretty impressed with this crap and to me it's complete junk. But hopefully this helps y'all. We're gonna get this one untaped this morning. You can see all the trash in it right there across the top, all the imperfections. This is where this outline, you can kind of see these lines right here. That's where I wipe the old paint off. Uh, you can see it good in person, but I'm having a hard time showing it on the camera. Uh, it'd be so easy to do like this and make these jobs look really good. Uh, but I, I try not to do that. I try to show y'all all the imperfections. But I mean, overall, this thing is really, it's not bad. I mean, I'm even honestly impressed with the orange peel level. Like, it's not bad. I didn't intend to do it that good. I mean, I just, I just laid it on thick. Uh, all the stars aligned, I guess, and it didn't run last night or nothing. But, I mean, normally this stuff don't run. I normally don't have a problem with this stuff. This is the same stuff I use to paint the race trailer. The orange peel's a little thicker on the hood. But I'm happy with it. So, hopefully this helps y'all. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Um... You know, and we'll go from there. If I can help y'all in any way, y'all let me know. In our spray out card, let's check this real fast because I should be pretty close to this. Yep. That's the whole point of a spray out card. That way you can get the color. 
make sure it's right. And then when you're done, it should pretty much match.